Nameless, your arrival reminds me of the grand occasion when Penacone was first established. I was still a young, bright-eyed lad back then, lured here by the watchmaker's ads, full of zeal and ready to make my first fortune in life. Once, during a particularly grueling day, I passed out and was resuscitated by a drink from Mr. Sousa. That sweet taste has since been etched in my mind, and that was what drove me to create the Soul Glad that we all know and love today. The dream chasing era was truly a wondrous time. Oh, I miss those days and the watchmaker. Scorch Sand Hall is my homage to that time of boundless possibilities. I wholeheartedly hope you make it to the finish and emerge as the next superstars of Penacone. Now then, is there anything you'd like to say before the competition officially begins? The trailblazing spirit. How about you, Miss March? Hello, everyone! Next up, get ready for the Mega March 7th Adventure, where I'm going to break the speed run world record! Trailblazing into the uncharted and challenging the limits. That's Miss March 7th for you. How about Miss Firefly? I hope that by the end of this journey, Everyone will have achieved the outcome that they hope for. Ah, a wonderful wish! Miss Himiko, what are you expecting from your team? Safety first, everyone. <laughs> Simple words, but full of warmth. Waiting for you are three stages, each connected to that era. The first two stages offer two distinct paths to choose from with unique challenges on each route. And in the last stage, you will face off against a champion who has defended the title to this very day. A beloved contender whose noble virtues are unrivaled. Those are the rules. Simple. Everyone clear? Now. I hereby announce that the 33rd Scorch Sand Festival of the 20th season, sponsored by Soul Glad Enterprises, has started. Everyone, as the Charmony Festival is drawing closer, we must reach the end as quickly as possible. Factoring in efficiency and safety, splitting up into two groups is the best choice. March and I haven't known Miss Firefly for too long and aren't overly familiar with her. It'd probably be better if the two of you paired up. Fine by me. Let's do it. All right. I don't have a problem with that. We'll split into the assigned groups then. Let's not waste time.
Welcome to the first stage of Soul Glad Enterprises' 33rd Scorch Sand Festival of the 20th season, Dream Play Fantasia. In this stage, you can choose between two challenges, the School of Acting or School of Action. In the School of Acting Challenge, you have to complete three performances from three scripts and move the panel judges. In the School of Action Challenge, you have to defeat three groups of enemies convincingly and reach the end. Now, make your choice. introduce the rules of this challenge to you. There are a total of three stages up ahead, each with their own challenges. The enemies you will contend against are antagonists from the film Once Upon a Time in Dreams. Defeat them swiftly and decisively to set a new record. It's worth mentioning that the fastest time at this stage was achieved by a contestant with fiery red hair. Astoundingly, he overcame all enemies across the three stages in only five minutes. Time is of the essence. Let's make this quick. to confront the monsters of the primordial dreamscape. During this period, Penacony was nothing but a barren wasteland. The dreamscape was fraught with strife and disorder, with memory zone memes running rampant. As dream chasers who've come to Penacony, defeating them is your first step towards success. Don't even think about plundering the soul glad from us! Resonate all together! <laughs> Ill tidings manifest! <sighs> Again? Destined for oblivion. Receive divinity. Uh? I weep for the departed. <laughs> it too shall fall. Congrats! 
congratulations on becoming the first group of dream chasers! Answering the call from the watchmaker, you are disappointed to learn that Panacone isn't paved with gold! Resigned to your current plight, you start from the hierarchical dredges, biding your time for a chance at success. Just as you're about to give up, a downpour sparks a business idea. You enter the umbrella business! But just as things are looking up, you encounter a competitor. Defeat them and emerge victorious from this trade war. Why is our opponent so glad? Because this is So Glad Enterprise's 33rd festivity auditions of the 20th season! Isn't this just product placement? To safeguard the integrity of Soul Glad, I will soar high into the sky and become its shiniest star. Whoosh! for the department. It's his shall fall. The world kisses me with pain, and I provide with soul glad in return. Whoosh! Let's wait and see. Sound Congratulations to our two dream chasers for establishing yourselves as budding stars in Pentacony. However, now you face a competitor selling at low prices, pushing you to the brink of bankruptcy. No matter how lengthy the battle, you always persevere. 
topple this powerful opponent, and the tides will turn, paving a way to success! None will take my soul glide away from me. I will use the transmutation arcanum to turn into a dinosaur! Roar! Oh, dinosaur! Devour my enemies! Roar! Grab a bottle of soul glide and make your dreams a blast! Roar! Repay! Eternal. Time to say bye. Divinity. Just for oblivion. Stand still. The dead return! I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. The body withers, but the soul glad name shall not. Ah, you truly are a beast, more than I can ever be. Huh. That should do it. Okay, let's go. Mr. Gang is waiting for us. Way off from the actual storyline? Transforming into a dinosaur isn't imaginative enough for you? This is the sort of magic only seen on Penacony. Anyway, let's get back on track. Where were we? Oh, that's right. After an extended battle, you finally emerged victorious! But the companion who journeyed to Penacony with you chose to leave. Having lost all hope. In the years that followed, you encountered each other once more on the prosperous streets of Penacony, but dared not call out to one another. Perhaps akin to the lingering regret of every dream chaser. Ah, oh, well done! You brought to life the thrilling action scenes from Once Upon a Time in Dreams with your fighting skills. Looks like we won! Huh. Let's hurry up and get to the next stage.
both of you for clearing the stage, but more importantly, are you having fun? <laughs> fun is more important than success. Look at the timer. You finished much faster than that red-haired contestant did. <laughs> that red-haired contestant? Who is that exactly? You'll find out eventually, but only if you clear the next test first. Welcome to the second stage of the 33rd Scott Sand Festival in the 20th season, sponsored by Soul Glad Enterprises. Gunfire time! You have the option to choose gunfire and undergo Brother Hanu's trial, or time, where you'll face Clucky's trial. And now, make your choice! Welcome to the enchanting universe created by the Watchmaker. <laughs> Awaiting you is the morally dubious yet ever-charming character from the animated Clarky series, Hanu! It is said that these cartoon characters were inspired by the Watchmaker's own experiences. According to research by Clarky scholars, the original Hanu of reality shared a deep friendship with the Watchmaker, akin to comrades in arms. Enter into the world of Hanu via the TV by the entrance and partake in an enchanting and suspenseful story with him. Good luck in there. If it's a gunfire trial, we should be able to settle this with a fight, right? I hope this won't waste too much of our time. Hanu's adventure episode, Boss Stone has gathered his battleships for an assault on Dreamville. Old Buzzfly, Cousin Wolf, and Bombhead are all raring to go. The brave Hanu must thwart their advance and protect his home. Alas, Hanu presently is ill-equipped to fend off the malevolent mischief makers, which is why he is preparing to seek out the puzzle gentleman's aid. Go forth and speak to him. Hanu, you look like you could really use some help. Long time no see, Hanu. You look pretty stressed out. How about an intense and thrilling game of Dream Jigsaw to blow off some steam?
telling me that Boss Stone has rallied the villains to seize Dreamville? What a dreadful twist of fate! Listen closely, Hanu. I'm aware you're in need of a suitable weapon. And I also know there's one just upstairs. But you know what? You'll have to play an exhilarating round of Dream Jigsaw first. No Jigsaw, no moving forward. Now scurry along, Hanu, but tread carefully. Two ne'er-do-wells are also eyeing those jigsaw pieces. Either outsmart them with the quick knockout, or ensure they don't catch you in the act. I can't wait to see you finish the dream jigsaw. Best of luck, Hanu. Let's stay alert and make sure those monsters don't spot us. Look up there! If we can push that thing down, do you think that would do the trick? back. itch has been quite thoroughly scratched. Hurry now, Hanu. Touch that TV set and transform back into your old self. Then head upstairs. Your weapon awaits you there. Are such haphazard instructions really okay? Disconnecting from that thing so suddenly has left me feeling slightly disoriented. Oh! <laughs> 
exactly is he talking about? Tick tock! It's time for me to make an appearance! Clocky? Uh, I can also see him. Is this character part of the show? In Dreamville, Clocky is everywhere and can do anything! Like right now! I can be your translator! Tick tock! says, battle! We must do battle! <laughs> the enemy is at our doorstep, and we have no path of retreat for the future of Dreamville! <laughs> Touch that suspicious-looking TV right now! So they just jumped inside that TV. Sheesh. Logic in this plot and dialogue is really being pushed to its limits. say high-level movies just now. <laughs> That's right, pal. The upcoming script is just exploding with all sorts of high-level shenanigans. Last we saw, Hanu was preparing for battle. Suddenly, he hears heavy footsteps coming from the hallway. The mischief makers have broken into his home. But brave Hanu won't go down without a fight. He instantly sprints for the storage room, ready for a do-or-die showdown against the baddies. But... we still don't have any weapons in hand. Guess what? Hanu's favorite bazooka just so happens to be in that storage room. <laughs> so get a move on. <sighs> what a coincidentally convenient plot twist. It'd be even more awesome if the organizers allowed me to wear armor. The storage room. I it's behind the shelves, right? <sighs> he wasn't lying. There's actually a bazooka here. Now we should have a way of dealing with those bats. This thing feels just like the Soaring Locust, too. Careful. It looks like we've got more company. Get ready to fire! this bazooka now.
That should be all of them, right? Oh my! Our movie's on a street! Everyone! The stage is complete! Quickly, head through the TV to the next stage! This bazooka. Um. Never mind. <laughs> Let's hurry over to the next stage. Congratulations to both of you! Oh, you've overcome all obstacles and proven yourselves! But, uh, unfortunately, there is only one who can be Pelicone's festive superstar. In the final stage, you will face the defending champion. If you fail, you will lose the opportunity to become the festive superstar. Welcome to the 33rd Scorch Sand Festival's third stage in the 20th season, sponsored by Soul Glad Enterprises Superstar Showdown! I think I just saw someone. Someone extraordinary.
Behold, the symbol of pure yeah. Just in time. Hit the hook. Another turn. Good times. No time to say bye. Boom. No water to flip. Some value, I suppose. Eternal. You chose the wrong end. <laughs> Stand still. You are fighting a gentleman. I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. Every petal in life's call will be swept away by the wind. Put forth all your might! Eternal sleep is not that dead. Return! No flesh Free will or what? Huh. Relax. There's more to life. Existence is unity. I'll see you off. Rise to the challenge. <laughs> Bear witness. To here. Just that for oblivion. Eternal. <laughs> Stand still. Rise to the challenge. Good times never last. Time to say bye. Boom. Duel commence. Oh. Hit the hook. Didn't hurt. Put forth all your might. Nothing made. Receive divinity. So this is the way of life. Sleep is dead. Dead return. I weep for the departed. Behold, the symbol of Peel. You are fighting a gentleman. Is this unity? You chose the wrong man. All will be swept away by the wind. Rise to the challenge. Rise to the challenge. Good times. No time to say bye. Boom. Thanks. You're too Eternal good to sleep me. is not the end. The dead return! Good times. Time to say bye. Boom. Bear witness. You are fighting a gentleman. Behold, the symbol of pure... Speak <laughs> back, Clara. Risk warning. Liquidation! <laughs> Free will, or was it from <laughs> still water of judgment? I weep for the departed. <laughs> it too shall fall. I need to be 
breathe. Ah, you are fighting a jet. Put forth all your might. Stay back, Clara. I'm yours. Don't kill me. Let the valuation to go nothing. I'm worthy. Dusted for oblivion. Bear witness to <laughs> risk warning. Liquidation! <laughs> Commencing research. Here, try this! Save for your own skin. Trust. Another journey begins. <laughs> Let duel commence. Push forth all your might. <laughs> to travel far away. Be revealed. In lunar flame. Later. Secret. Oh, pretty good perk. Behold the symbol of pure. Ready? The market is unpredictable. Right. Investing in victory means playing the ball game. Nowhere to run. Let's <laughs> inside it. You are fighting a jet. Let's on your you kill me. Free will, or was it fate? Yeah. Bleeding. Put all your might. To travel far. Tedious. <laughs> That's half the work on the still waters of living. <laughs> I weep for the departed. <laughs> it takes a fall. Bear witness to <laughs> Time to change tactic. Lend me your strength. Another Enter journey the begins. storm. To guard and defend. Crush them. Just them for oblivion. Let's play for a while. Don't Let them inside it. Let the duel commence. Put forth all your might. <laughs> Resistance is timely. The waters of oblivion. I weep for the departed. It takes a fall. You'll pay for this. Lend me your strength. Troublesome. Resistance is timely. Lend me your strength. Behold, this symbol of pure. I'll go easy this time. Feeling sticky? Let's play. Can you find the answer? Dust for oblivion. Commencing research. You are fighting a jet. Let's on your. We've entered the storm. To guard and defend! Crush them! Uh, 
still waters of oblivion. Put forth all your might! Jack, I need something to me! To travel far away! <laughs> Don't worry, Let's it's play just a scream. Don't worry, it's just a scrape. Just a for oblivion. Bear witness. To Troublesome. I'll go easy this feeling sticky. Free will, or was it? The duel commence. I weep for the departed. It is a fall. Behold, this symbol of pure beauty! Specimen sighted! Here, try this! Your assistance is timely. <laughs> you are fighting a gentleman. <laughs> this battle is unavoidable. Lend me your strength. Another journey begins. We've entered the storm. To guard and defend! Crush them! Still <laughs> waters of oblivion. The flesh will... <laughs> Let's play. Can you find the answer? Mental research. Deeper. To travel far. Resistance is time. All your might. The duel commence. Lend me your strength! Just uh, for oblivion. Uh, I think something Put forth me. all your might! Uh, 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 Mother! Sister! You feeling sticky? You are fighting a gentleman. Like that! Uh -huh. uh, let's play! Can you find the answer? Put forth all your might! Bear witness to <laughs> Good times never last. Time to say bye. Boom. An elusive foretelling. Ill tidings manifest. May as well kill them all. Beneath the water lies an endless oh, abyss. I weep for the departed. It is so fall. I'll see you off. Rise to the challenge. Damn Confess! Put forth all your might! Ill fate is there! No flesh wound! Don't worry, it's just Let's a gun word. The will show the dead return! The flesh will... Destined for oblivion. You chose the wrong enemy. Relax. <laughs> Ill hiding the flesh will... Behold, the symbol of pure beauty! I weep for the departed. <laughs> it takes a fall. Bear witness to honor. <laughs> Good times. Time to say bye. Boom. You are fighting a gentleman. Confess. Ah! 
See you off. Receive divinity. Praise to the challenge. Say bye to breathing. Memories are ever beneath the water. Lies an endless abyss. Put forth all your might. I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. You chose the wrong enemy. Destiny's hand. Eternal Return. May as well kill them all. <laughs> Put forth all your might. Didn't hurt. Behold, the symbol of pure Good time. beauty. Never time to say bye. Boom. What do you want to know? Ill hiding manifest. Duel commence. Let's stand low. Another journey begins. Just for oblivion. our way to the end. Panacone's really thronging with talent. I hope we make it in time.
congratulations to the both of you on becoming the festive superstars of this year's Charmony Festival before entering the Grand Theater. I, on behalf of the organizers, extend my sincere congratulations to you, wishing you joy under their radiance. Your endeavors are worthy of extra recognition, and I've taken steps to ensure that. However, this reward is not a material one, but rather the opportunity for an open and honest communication between us. As previously promised, my sister, Mr. Yang, and I have met with the Dream Master. We delved into the truth about Panacone and its Stellaron, and have come to a consensus. Both I and the Oak family cannot acquiesce to your request. <sighs> Just as expected. We acknowledge the perspective of you, Nameless. Panacone does require change, but not as you propose. The planet of festivities cannot and will not revert to a place characterized by chaos, disorder, or anarchy. Through your journey of overcoming obstacles, you must have glimpsed the essence of that era. The vulnerable ruthlessly eliminated, equality non-existent, common folk living precarious lives, eking out a dreary existence. Ultimately, only heroes like yourselves manage to achieve success. But I would dare ask, if you did not possess the special status of having a Stellaron, and you were but an anonymous and frail member among the masses, which Penacony would you prefer? A dystopia for the survival of the fittest, or a sweet dream paradise for all? Sunday, even if the members of the Oak family can't fully agree on what to do about the Stellaron, now's not exactly the time to be holding an extensive discourse about Penacone's past and future, is it? The Stellaron issue concerns the life and death of everyone on Penacone. If anyone has a better suggestion, the crew is more than willing to listen. Also, it'd be best to tell us the ins and outs of that meeting. This way, We'll at least know what Welt and Miss Robin are dealing with, and the reason why they failed to make our appointment. Ah, Navigator. That is precisely my intention. With all present, let's begin by discussing the details of that meeting. Let's talk about our tribulations and choices, our ideals and beliefs, and our final course of action. The only path to take. You mean to say that for the longest time there have been scoundrels who would use this the Charmity Festival that I have bequeathed to the masses? as a tool to realize their ambition. Indeed, Dream Master. Once the Charmony Festival begins, the Stellaron's powers, along with the song, 
will be broadcast across the entire planet of Penacony. And then everyone in their dreams will be unable to awaken. Hmm. This, this is, is indeed surprising to me. The dreamscape is maintained by the collective effort of the five families. If someone were to use the Charming Festival to recklessly disseminate the power of the Stellaron, this individual must hold a position of great authority. Do you have any suspects? I'd like to ask. Did you really not know of the Stellaron's existence? I would have never thought that this nameless would point the spear at me. Quite astonishing indeed. If I have offended, the Astral Express extends its sincere apologies. But the current circumstances are dire, and leave no room for meticulous inquiry. We're doing this out of concern for the dreamscape's safety. So, if you could, please alleviate our concerns. Dream Master, it's just to prove that the Charmony Festival has nothing to do with the Stellaron. If we're being overly cautious, I will return to the stage to offer tribute in song. Just per the arrangement. <sighs> Sunday, Robin. I've watched you two grow up and know your dispositions like the back of my hand. Both of you, right now, can surely be lauded as their most devout advocates. I already know your resolve. The magnitude of this matter is enormous, and cannot be taken lightly. Since Mr. Yang has asked with such earnestness, I will personally respond in kind. If there is a need, the entire Oak family will be mobilized to heed your call. Sunday. Might I ask you to beseech them to cast their light unto me and question me in their stead so that no lies may be concealed? I will do as you command. Robin, could I entrust you to be present as a witness, to document the truth, and to proclaim my innocence so that all slander may be utterly dispelled? I will do as you command. May thy will be carried out on earth, just as it is in the heavens. Oh, triple-faced soul, please sear his tongue and palms with a hot iron, so that he will not be able to fabricate lies and make false vows. Let us begin. There is nothing else to prepare. Understood. Question. Have you devoted your life to your god, never worshipping other gods? Naturally. Do you love your god as you do yourself, always heeding their admonishments? Naturally. Have you strayed from the path expected by your god, betraying their name? Never. Have you ever been inordinate with your asks of your god, coveting more than the foundation of the creation itself? Never. Then. A final question. Do you swear to fulfill all vows, past, present, and future? With the Eon as my witness, 
If I do not deliver on my words, or if I renege on my vows, may I be cursed in accordance with divine law. They have seen your faith, and have endorsed your faith. With this, it can be evidenced... Just a moment. What is it, Mr. Yang? I have another question I hope to have answered. To my understanding, the family's harmony and prosperity have never relied on so-called divine laws. The god you both mentioned, are they truly Shipei? Mr. Yang should know that those belonging to the family toil together as if they were king, embracing solidarity and unity under their light. All duplicity is laid bare before the harmony. Such a delicate and complex symphony. Which other god could perfectly harmonize this if not for the great one? Shibe. Perfectly harmonize it. Therein lies the problem. It isn't an outsider lurking in the shadows who changed the harmony, but a dissonance that has surreptitiously emerged from within this very symphony itself. In the distant past, there existed an eon. With one flick of the wrist, they crafted the laws of the cosmos. Their followers formed the Beyond the Sky Choir, spreading solemn and reverent hymns throughout the universe. Later, they fell. The route traversed by this eon clashed with the harmony, ultimately being absorbed and fused into it. The chorus that once reverberated across worlds fell silent, and when it echoed anew, it was transformed into the Hymn of Harmony. Though an eon may perish, paths with no masters still linger. In the all-forgiving harmony, echoes of bygone dissonance may subtly arise. Mr. Yang, being overly astute can be a detriment, especially when you find yourself alone and without allies. So this is how it is. For the sake of our grand cause, Sunday, please afford these two an opportunity to rest. What? Sorry, Robin. It's just you... I did not wish for you to know this. <sighs> it's a pity that things have turned out this way. So, this is the true reason I can't sing? The shadow that envelops Panacone is actually... We were never children of the Harmony. Our ideal paradise could not have been crafted by Shipe. True bliss can only be guaranteed by the one who transcends the many. Within the foundation of law, humanity establishes civilization, and through harmony, we obtain order. To think that there would be remnants of the Order on Penacony. What have you done with Mr. Yang and Miss Robin? Don't worry. I just gave them some time alone to ponder their fates. You should know that these actions make you an enemy of the Astral Express. Should we need to stand against the Nameless, it would only be myself and the Oak family involved. But we haven't reached that point yet, have we? 
Your efforts for the justice of Panacone are evident to everyone, and have been widely observed. <laughs> Patience is a virtue. However, I won't hold it against you. On the contrary, I'm here to make my intentions clear. If it is the Order that drove you to imprison Welt and Robin, and you're using them to coerce our compliance, then there'll be no point in entertaining any type of discussion. You're mistaken, Miss Himiko. They are in very safe hands, and just as the family has always proclaimed, no one can be harmed in the dreamscape, least of all in the beautiful new world belonging to the Order. Panacone and the entire universe have witnessed far too much innocent bloodshed. The strong wield their blades against the weak, and the victors push the vanquished to the brink of life. Natural selection. The world abides by this principle, establishing the well-being of humanity atop the corpses of the downtrodden. Only we, or rather, I possess the power to put an end to this farce. So you've decided to resurrect a dead Eon? No one's ever done such a thing. If Miss Himiko is interested, let's draw back the veil and speak candidly. I've always firmly believed that people can understand one another through peaceful means. I'm willing to divulge the unembellished truth as to the intentions of the Order's path striders, so that you will make better judgment for the Astral Express, for Panacone, and for this stretch of the universe. Words can hardly do justice to the beauty of that ideal. So, come with me, everyone. Let us retrace our steps and see once again where this road leads. Welcome. This isn't any location in Panacone's dreamscape. It's my inner world. The reason the scenery before you remains unchanged is because your consciousness has drawn on similar concepts to fill in the gaps. Did you do the same to Welt? It's a tuning process. Stronger in effect and more draining on the mind. The gray-haired guest has experienced it before, so he should understand what it entails. Tuning allows you to intuitively grasp my feelings, which also means that I cannot hide anything from you. Now, everyone. Please look at the huge screen. The road we once took begins here. From this point on, you will witness the numerous decisions I've faced. I've selected a portion of these to share with you. I believe after going through similar predicaments, you'll be able to better understand my thoughts. Let's begin. The first decision. A story about a baby bird. This story happened when Robin and I were very young. We were victims of the Stellaron disaster, and the family's Mr. Gopher Wood, who would later become the Dream Master of Panacone, saw that we siblings had no one to turn to and took us in. Later on, Robin and I lived the time with nary a care in the world. One day, after dinner, while my younger sister and I were lounging about in Mr. Gopher Wood's yard, we spotted a fledgling Charmony dove all on its own. That baby bird was tiny. It didn't even have all of its feathers, and it couldn't sing. When we found it, it was already on its last breath having fallen into a shrub. 
probably abandoned by its parents. We decided to build a nest for it right there and then. However, thinking back, that winter was unusually cold, with fierce winds at night in the yard, not to mention the many poisonous bugs and wild beasts in the vicinity. It was clear that if we left the fledgling in the yard, it stood no chance of surviving until spring. So, I suggested we take it inside, place it on the shelf by the window, and asked the adults to fashion a cage for it. We decided that when it regained its strength enough to spread its wings, we would release it back into the wild. The tragic part, something that we'd never considered, was that this bird's fate had already been determined long before this moment. Its destiny was determined by our momentary whim. Now, I pass the power of choice to you all. Faced with this situation, what choice would you make? Stick to the original plan, and build a nest with soft net where the Charmony Dove fell. Or build a cage for it, and feed it, giving it the utmost care from within the warmth of a home. I eagerly await your answer. for the little Charmony Dove. After all, leaving it there, it's bound to get hurt by wild animals or something. And that'd just be too sad. release it back into the sky, it'd have to be strong enough to fly first. If I left it where I found it, I fear it'd never get the chance to fly ever again. It looks like he really has no intention of imprisoning us. If it's just a quiz, I suppose it's fine to humor him. The question, I would personally choose to build the little Charmony Dove a cage. No special reason. I do think that a fledgling should have the right to fly into the sky. But if it can't even live to that point, then there's nothing to talk about to begin with. different again. Interesting. Since you've made up your mind, allow me to reveal what fate this choice will bring to the fledgling. From what I've observed, 
There are at least three predators in that yard that prey on small birds. The Vosicle Scorpion, Asdana Wolverine, and the Huntington Winged Snake. Even if they shy away from humans, these animals are still near apex predators in a fenced location like a yard. In such a location, only one fate awaits that little Charmony dove. A painful death. As for the choice you made, I am deeply sorry. Now, let us advance to the second decision. This time, it's the story of a dream chaser. This story happened when I was appointed as Bronze Melodia, a position exclusive to the Oak family, charged with listening to the problems and vexations of dreamscape residents, and providing them with the relevant guidance. It was during that period that I had the opportunity to hear voices from all corners of the dreamscape. Joy, sorrow, arrogance, regret. The complex tapestry of human nature that formed the world. And I was fortunate to catch a glimpse of it. He was a dream chaser and an illegal stowaway. Just like the rest of them, he came to Panacone in search of a better life, except that, to most people, the price he paid. <sighs> I suppose you could say it was everything. He told me, I sold everything I could at home. The house, the land, even his two children. He said he could not afford to raise them, and that, at least, they could eat if they lived as slaves. He had a plan in place. He would buy back his children once he had made his fortune, and enjoy Panacone's beautiful dream with them. Alas, his plan to smuggle himself was somewhat clumsy, and he was sniffed out by those pig-headed hounds. After hearing the Dream Chaser's story, I immediately appealed to the Bloodhound family to cease their pursuit. That way, at least he could live peacefully. But I was still too naive to the ways of the world. I did not anticipate that what I thought was a kind gesture would later lead to dire consequences. I'll tell you the outcome soon. For now, I'd like you all to make a choice. Will you do as I did, and try to convince the Bloodhound family to stop their pursuit, so that the Dream Chaser may live peacefully and realize his wishes? Or will you remain silent, leaving him to languish while the hounds are hot on his heels, until his inevitable judgment arrives? I look forward to everyone's decisions. Who knows? Perhaps they might even alter the outcome of this tragedy. choose to ask the bloodhounds to cease their pursuit. A dream chaser story. If I acted out of kindness, I would probably ask the bloodhounds to stop their pursuit and lend them a hand. 
But what cruel repercussion would this choice result in? I think Sunday must have been deeply impressed by the limitations of the strong defending the weak through this incident. Illegal stowaways are really quite common on Penacony. But that guy in the story, I don't think he deserves any sympathy at all. He sold his kids to chase a dream. Even if he intended to go back for them, it's still insanely irresponsible. With that thought, there's only one choice. Let the Bloodhound send him back home. This person deserves to be punished. I'm honored to witness you arriving at the same decision. Out of respect, I'll share with you the dire consequences that my choice back then brought about. First, the outcome. He attained major success. After avoiding capture, he ran a business for a few years, very quickly making a name for himself, elevating his status. He might not have become a tycoon like old Artie, but he was considered a character of excellent repute. Now then, did he realize the wish he set out to achieve? No. The last time I saw him was in the real world, where the Hounds were going to permanently exile him, and I was the accompanying Bronze Melodia. The mission was simple. Listen to the criminal's repentance. He told me the reason he was in this predicament was because he conspired to usurp the head of the Alfalfa family. When I asked him about his two children, he instead responded with a question. What children? In the end, my heart aligned with the harmony, and the good deed I dared to undertake held no value turning instead into a wrongdoing. It created a lamentable oppressor and countless oppressed individuals. As to your choice, I once again offer my heartfelt apologies. Next comes the third and final decision. And the story this time is my own. This story happened the day I was appointed the Oak family head. At that time, Mr. Gopherwood was the current Dream Master. And as for his wish, we had a private conversation. What surprised me was that the Dream Master had only come to deliver a letter to me. He let me read its contents, and it was a letter from my sister. The letter contained the usual pleasantries, anecdotes from her travels, nothing out of the ordinary. Just as I started wondering how this letter related to our discussion, the Dream Master began to speak. Do you know who wrote this letter? My sister, of course. But why would you personally visit me to hand me a letter from my sister containing mere trivialities? To help you grasp the full scope of this issue, do you know where Robin is at this moment? From what the letter indicates, she must be in Caspelina 8, correct? She's touring there right now. Has she mentioned anything about a stray bullet? A stray bullet? What? A war has broken out on that planet. It is because of this very reason that Robin chose this destination. To spread the word of the Harmony. And to save the lives of that planet. She personally made for the front lines. 
She hoped to ease the people's suffering with song, and was willing to brave mortal danger to deliver the IPC's medical supplies. Unfortunately, stray bullets show no such compassion. Is she all right? If the operation was successful, she should probably be recovering in the field hospital. By the eon above, the bullet struck her neck directly, yet possibly as a reward for her consistent deeds of harmony. It didn't hit any vital arteries. Once you've attended to your outstanding tasks, it'd be advisable to write her back as soon as possible. Those damned savages! I'll pack my bags right away. My gratitude for bringing this to my attention, Mr. Gopherwood. Now you understand why she always wears such elaborate neck ornaments, don't you? How could this happen? Miss Robin? It's all in the past, so please don't worry. I share this in the meager hope that you will understand the harmonies, limitations, and predicament. As grandiose as the strong defending the weak sounds, many times, it is nothing more than wishful thinking. Likewise, I've prepared one last question, one last choice. But rest assured, this choice will not have any grave consequences. Because this is merely a figment of imagination, a nightmare that has haunted me through countless nights. If you ever had the opportunity to make a choice like I did, would you still support Robin's journey on the path of harmony? of similar scenes on certain nights. In the dream, I see blurry faces. I don't know who they are, but I sympathize with all of them, fighting for survival against some unfathomable force. Their confusion and fear are lucid to me, but I also remember they chose never to give up. Just like Miss Robin. <sighs> if Mr. Sunday's question leaves you puzzled, you should find the answer from your own experiences. With each trailblaze, dangers and tribulations will surely follow. But would you ever back away? Would you stop March and Don Hung from reaching their next destination? I believe you have an answer of your own in your heart. I can't believe that happened to Miss Robin. The strong defending the weak is a great mantra, but if I had to pay such a price, I... I don't know what I'd do. that happened to Miss Robin. The strong defending the weak is a great mantra, but if I had to pay such a price, I... I don't know what I'd do.
I see. I am now aware of everyone's stances. Raising these questions merely serves to illustrate one point. The plight of Panacone cannot be salvaged by the harmony. The true foundation for a sweet dream paradise can only be established through the order where the strong govern the weak. I know the suffering of being tormented, the turmoil of losing your way, how sorrow and even despair set in when matters don't work out. All of this causes me unending pain because this is not what happiness is at all. We must teach the weak how to live a happy life. And this life isn't some noble propriety that the upper crust preaches, but in definitive terms, a way of survival that belongs to everyone. So what is your definition of living a happy life? Huh. Good question. Human consciousness is fundamentally an illusion, a cage known as self-worth. People lured in by this illusion make mistakes, yet still ask that external influences bear the burden. When one mistake after the next permeates the masses, they become impossible to trace. Thus, the amassing of these individual cages culminate to form a prison. A place dictated only by the rule of survival of the fittest. Nature is always accompanied by predation and sacrifice. Its antithesis is known as order. That is what I want to do. Unite people's happiness under the banner of order. They won't need to make bitter choices any longer, nor face the weaknesses of humanity. They can cast aside their primal instincts to build a haven for mankind. <laughs> simply describing thoughts is far too abstract. So allow me to provide a simple example. As you all may know, there are societal norms like weekends and long weekends that exist on some worlds. During these hard-earned rest days, People are given the chance to extricate themselves from the stresses of everyday life, allowing a certain tranquility to return to their souls. And it is only on these days that people do not have to adhere to the law where the strong prey on the weak. They can live out their lives happily during these brief intermissions. It's just a pity that two or three days are still too fleeting compared to the span of a lifetime. From where I stand, society's ideal system should be seven rest days. Following Sunday, there should ensue a second, a third, and indeed an infinite procession of Sundays. This should be the face of the new world. Idyllic, eternal, peaceful days. And thus, every person can return to their base selves in this utopia. Some gaze in reverence at the stars, pouring their whole beings into calculating the distance between us and the isolated world of Pagana. Meanwhile, some seek refuge in quiet corners, holding one another, unencumbered by the chains of unwelcome obligations. There would be no need to bear the hardships of reality. Only in this way can humanity face the inevitable end with the purest of spirit. Living a life of dignity. This is what it is to live in bliss. Miss Firefly, you who are stricken with entropy loss syndrome, you of all would surely understand this. Price 
to attain all this? The cost is minute. Merely a personal and eternal sacrifice. If this paradise is to be maintained for everyone, someone must remain trapped in solitary wakening until the end of the cosmos. Wakening? Which means that this so-called paradise is still a dream. Stepping into this paradise means forsaking reality, correct? It is not forsaking, but transcending. Flesh, blood, sorrow, weakness. If the physical is the root of spiritual suffering, it is only logical that we defeat it. But in this supposed bliss, people won't have defeated their demons. The chance to overcome their tribulations would be forever lost to them. In other words, it is an escape. That's another way of understanding it. But there is no shame in escape. On the contrary, the seeds of escape exist in everyone's hearts. Don't you agree, Miss Firefly? And as to why we sleep, it is because we are afraid to awaken from our dreams. But this is not in conflict with the grand plan. Only in acknowledging this can we truly understand the frailty of human nature and from there show compassion and protection. I... I admit that you are a born leader. Your perspective on humanity brims with pessimism. Yet you express compassion for all. Even when your heart pities them. But unlike you, I live for the self. From my perspective, individuals making choices for themselves is their birthright. The want to escape may be innate in the weak. But whether they are weak or not, it is not up to another to decide. Perhaps in your mind, you also view me as weak? <laughs> because I don't think so. Since Miss Firefly has said her piece, the Astral Express will also naturally give you our answer. We'll leave it to you. Just as Mr. McHale instructed before, tell him our choice. this place. Does this place ring any bells, Misha? I... I don't know, but I feel a sense of deja vu. What is this place? It's the realm within a dream bubble. This was left to the Astral Express by a nameless, but weirdly, when we entered it, it was completely empty. Dr. Edward from the Dreamscape sales store told me that dreams are formed from memories, and a dream bubble can't take shape if its core is empty. So I thought you might be able to help us in unraveling this mystery, Misha. As a hotel doorman, you know Panacone best among us. Hmm. I... I don't know much about dream bubbles, but... If you want to figure out what this mansion is, I'll do my best. I'm counting on you then. Uh, Himeko, I still don't get it. Why were you so sure that Misha had a connection with this dream bubble? I wasn't sure. It was just a hunch. But since Misha feels familiar with this place, my hunch might be correct. Exactly. This is where you and Firefly encountered death. 
which we now know as dormancy. Considering its connection to Dreamflux Reef, it's not surprising it appeared here. The question now is, who brought you here? Based on the clues we have so far, it's unlikely to be that masked fool. So, identifying them is crucial to us. We're drawing closer to the truth once more. Let's give Misha some time, as I believe he'll unveil the secret of this dream bubble. Alright, but there are doors all over the place. Which one should we choose? Do you have any idea, Misha? Hmm... I guess... Maybe this way? Uh, I'm not entirely sure, but... Let's give it a try. Wait, you managed to choose the right door on your first try? Weird. This place is quite different from the hotel. But I just, I feel like I've been here before and even lived here for a while. If I remember correctly, there should be a fireplace down that hallway. Clocky and I used to sit by the fire, listening to the crackling of firewood. And and the room on the other side was the toy room. I loved spreading out all the toys from the box on the floor and making up stories for each of them. Hold on. This doesn't make sense. Didn't I grow up in Dreamflux Reef? So, what is this place? This could be a case of amnesia. But don't worry, Misha. It's common for everyone to forget certain aspects of the past. Those memories haven't vanished. They're just lying in the depths of your mind. We can surely get them back. Since this place seems familiar to you, why don't we explore a few more rooms and see if you can recall anything more? Yeah, then let's check out the rooms I just mentioned. the watchmaker so who is he talking to do you know anything about it Misha I'm sorry I don't know much about the watchmaker but Mikhail anything special about that name Mikhail is is grandpa's name grandpa do you mean you're the Watchmaker's grandson? But we haven't heard anything about the Watchmaker having descendants. And the name Mikhail is not rare. Perhaps it's merely a coincidence. Could you tell us more about your grandpa, Mikhail? Yeah, sure. He was a seafarer who fearlessly ventured into mysterious seas and storms. He was always on the sea and had lots of friends who accompanied him on his travels. He didn't want me to call him Grandpa because that would make him sound old. He believed he was still young. The name Mikhail was given to him by his parents, Mihaly and Elise, both renowned seafarers. Every time he came back, he'd share his logbook with me and tell me about his adventures at sea. I want to become a great adventurer, just like him. It appears that the seafarer has nothing to do with the watchmaker. So, perhaps it's just a coincidence? So, where is your grandpa now? He went off on a new journey. And it's been quite a while since I last saw him. So, where has Clocky gone? Did he leave to protect Dreamville?
I heard some noises from the room. Origami bird? That's a friend of mine. You and Origami bird are friends? Yeah. It's a member of the Compass crew, uh, just like Clocky and Miss Mirror. And there's more than just one origami bird. They are a big family with lots of brothers and sisters who look the same. They follow Miss Mirror's orders and handle all sorts of jobs on the ship. They're the best sailors. Sailors? Can origami birds be sailors? Could you tell us more about the compass, Nisha? The compass is a ship bound for the new world. Clarky and his partners travel through layers of fog to the depths of the sea. Whenever there is danger, Clocky will use a compass and guide the ship in the right direction. That's a great story. But in the Panacone cartoon, Clocky and his partners have always lived in Dreamville and never ventured out, right? Huh? Oh, that does seem to be the case. Weird. I... I clearly remember... Clocky arrived in the New World in the end. <laughs> Perhaps Clocky has a hidden past. I think... I hear the sound of water. You once mentioned there's a magnificent fountain up ahead. resembles a precious jewel embedded in the dreams of all seafarers. Every time I gaze at the shimmering lights beneath the waves, it feels as though I'm back in this place, standing by your side. Have you recalled anything, Misha? Yeah. I saw these sentences in Grandpa's logbook. He used to say that despite the perils of the sea, Whenever he stood on the deck in the afternoon, overlooking the sparkling waves, he would think of this fountain in front of his house. He often said that those moments felt like returning to his family's side, and the difficulties at sea didn't seem quite as challenging. Uh, you know, I quite understand such sentiments. Elder, I was just being a bit sentimental. Perhaps every adventurer far from home carries a fountain within their soul. Even though the other side of the sea remains shrouded in the unknown, the fountain in front of his house serves as a compass, leading him back to his cherished ones. Yeah, while Grandpa was at home, we would stand by the fountain and place the compass, a toy boat that I made, into the pool. Back then, I would ask him when I could go on adventures like him, and he would always laugh and say I was still too young. Oh, it seems this Mikhail is truly a seafarer and has nothing to do with the watchmaker. Yeah, based on Misha's recollections, the scenes in the dream bubble appear to be his childhood memories. But this raises more questions. According to Misha, he was clearly born on an oceanic planet and led an ordinary life, with no connection to Penacony at all. Could this be some sort of metaphor? Perhaps the sea refers to the memory zone. 
I'm sorry. I don't know, but my memories keep pouring out uncontrollably, like water flowing from a fountain. Perhaps I'll, I'll remember more things if we go further. I wish to share your burden. We're going to the opposite side, right? No, we should turn left here. about this place. This is it. I remember this corridor. Up ahead is... Grandpa's study. It was in that room that I... saw him the last time. Log books left behind by that seafarer? Yeah. Whenever he came back, he placed a log book on the bookshelf in his room. They contain records of his expeditions to every corner of the world. He described our world as a fountain. At some point, the sea started to gradually swallow up the land where people lived to ensure that everyone had land to settle on. He had to continue exploring the sea and search for the source of the rising seawater. On that day, he called me to his study, telling me that he was embarking on another journey. However, I could sense the gravity in his expression. It... It was the same look I had seen on my father's face before his final voyage. I asked him if I could go with him, but he said that my adventure lay elsewhere and told me to stay home and patiently await a certain sound at the door. What sound? He told me about a vast ocean in the sky an ocean of stars. He spoke of a train that transports children with a desire to venture far away, traversing the sea of stars without ever stopping. He said that he knew the crew on the train, and that he had asked them to take me along. He said the journey I had always dreamed of would start there. A train? Could it be? It's... It's the Astral Express. I... I remember now. Grandpa's friends are a group of nameless who came to this world to resolve a disaster caused by a star. Then, he gave his pocket watch to me. It was his cherished treasure appearing in every one of his adventure tales. He explained that difficult times were ahead, but assured me that the watch would guide me. He said, as long as I kept moving forward, I'd eventually reach my desired destination. And then, 
It was as if I heard the distant sound of a train whistle echoing throughout the room. Exactly, Misha! And then we followed that whistle, didn't we? Yeah. I think I can still find the way we took back then. This is the dream jigsaw, right? So we're supposed to find the exit. But where can we find the last piece? Do you remember? You said you obtained a mysterious shard when you stumbled into this place. The shape seems to match. So this shard is also connected to Misha? Looks like we're just one step from revealing the truth. Let's get to the other side and investigate. This is it. This is my room of clocks. While I spent my time waiting for Grandpa to return from his voyage, Walter gave me this workshop, and it became my secret base. Here, I learned how to repair clockwork and gears out of my fondness of precision mechanics. In my dreams, I was the captain of the compass, embarking on adventures with my companions, Clocky and Miss Mirror, in search of the new world. I... I was born and raised here. So, this building in the dream bubble is your childhood home? Yes, but not exactly. To be more precise, this dream bubble itself is my home. <laughs> Looks like you've remembered everything now. Wait, wait! Why does it feel like everyone else knows something I don't? March. Do you remember when he mentioned a clocky that only he could see? Yeah, the little guy here, right? But we all saw him in Dreamflux Reef, right? And Mr. Yang even greeted him. Looks like everyone on the Astral Express has a childlike spirit. The answer lies in the Astral Express. His experience shows that neither Firefly nor Acheron can see this clocky. And when we were in Dreamflux Reef, you may have noticed that for some reason, nobody outside of the crew had ever talked with clocky. A mimetic life that can only be seen by a select few it's just like a hidden message, left by someone for the nameless. But Misha can see Clocky too, right? They even grew up together. But Misha hasn't started the way of the trailblaze yet. That's the key to the mystery, March. Now take a moment to recall. Have you ever seen anyone outside of the crew interact with Misha? That's the answer, March 7th. This dream bubble is the place where I was born. And I... I'm a dweller in this dream. Just like a memory zone meme. I should have stayed here and waited for you. But when reality and memories merged, I unconsciously pushed open that door and left the bubble with Clocky. So it's not that the Watchmaker's dream bubble is empty, but rather 
The stuff inside ran away? And the whistle you heard... Was the sound of the express arriving at Penacony? That's one way to see it. But I believe there's a longer story behind all this. It's best for Misha himself to explain all the details. How about we start with your name? Now should we call you Misha, or...? Thank you all for helping me rediscover my true self. Now, please allow me to reintroduce myself. I was born on Lushaka, in the Presmere system. Adopted by seafarers Mikhail and Char. They gave me a treasure. A name that carried their hopes. Mikhail Char Legwork. Or simply, Misha. If you prefer, you can call me by a more familiar name. The Watchmaker. So, you're the Watchmaker himself? Unfortunately, that legendary figure is no more. I am only a reflection of his life. As for the child who has been with you, he's the innocent protagonist of Misha's childhood dream. Friend of Clocky, a young apprentice, and a future mechanic on the Express. And this also marks the beginning of his journey, devoted to the Trailblaze. At the, the end, end of, of the, the journey, journey I left, I left this, this little house, flame, which, which I so, so cherished, cherished, in, in my, my deepest, deepest dreams, hoping, hoping to, to pass, pass it on, it on to, to the, the nameless of, of future, future generations. generations. However, he somehow left the dream bubble and forgot all about his task. I apologize for all the confusion this caused. Because he was born with a desire to trailblaze, wasn't he? I don't think Misha has forgotten his role as a guide. He remembered it. And that's why he mistakenly appeared as a hotel doorman in his dream from the very beginning. The one who brought our unconscious friend here must have been Misha. If that's the case, we encountered the Watchmaker's legacy from the beginning, didn't we? Well... I have, I have a sarcastic, sarcastic friend who says, says I always, always take, take big detours, detours and, and end up back where I started. Perhaps that's, that's what every nameless has to go through. But in the end, end you found me. I'm, I'm sure, sure you're all wondering what my legacy is. is. I believe my hound has mentioned the Stellaron and my wealth. If I, I may apologize, apologize. The Stellaron part is real. As for my wealth, however, it's nothing more than a baseless rumor. I left my homeland as a child and embarked on the journey of Trailblaze. I traveled to various planets until finally reaching Esdana, where my friends and I built the original Penacony and fought for its future ever since. I've been moving forward all my life, doing what I could to overcome the obstacles in my path. But ultimately, my journey reached its end, and I left behind no possessions worth entrusting. So, if you ask what's left within this worn-out train engine that can be called a legacy. I suppose it's the things that are still burning in the engine's furnace. Now that you're well aware of the current situation of Penacony, I certainly hope that you'll help me get this world back on track. But I'll leave that decision to you, for the path of Trailblaze is never paved by others. All I have for you is a story and two gifts. 
I want to give you my pocket watch. It has accompanied me throughout my long journey, guiding that naive child forward, and has been blessed with the presence of so many great people up to this day. And my hat, too. The one who navigated for me placed it on my head and planted a fanciful thought in my mind. The trailblazing expedition will never end. Now, it's time for you to make your choice. Once you've made up your mind, open that door and enter the long dream of an old man. I'll be waiting for you at the end of this corridor of time. All right, everyone. Let's make a decision. Although I don't think anyone will have any objections. There's no other option than moving forward. In that case, it's unanimous. Then let's proceed together to the end of this dream and tell Mikhail our decision. to step up and save Lushaka. So why can't it be me, Misha? Please don't go. And if you must, please take me with you. Don't leave me alone. Even without me, you know how to proceed forward, brave Captain Misha. The compass is waiting for you. 
Haven't you always wanted to be a better adventurer than me? Now go, board that train, and start your journey! Where are you going, Mikhail? I... I'm going to clean the floor in the parlor car. I've promised the conductor. Wait, first tell me, did you fix this watch? Um, yeah. I know what it looked like before. Its chain was broken, the back case torn, and the marks on the dial all worn out. How did you manage to fix it? Well, uh, it's hard to explain, but I knew it could be fixed. It's the hands, Mr. Amundsen. Its hands were intact and pointing in the right direction, so I knew there would be a way to fix the rest. <laughs> I see. You'll work with me from now on. Haven't you always wanted to tinker with this train? You're its mechanic now. As for the conductor, I'll do the talking. But, but I only know how to fix watches. Don't worry. You've got what it takes. I'll teach you what you need to know. Where are you going, legwork? It's time to head to our next stop. I... I'm staying in Astana with Rosalina and Tiernan. I see. This place reminds you of home. The people of Astana have only achieved a tiny victory and still have a long way to go towards true freedom. Hanunu needs us. Don't worry, not all journeys lead to the stars. Even if I leave the Express, our path of trailblaze will continue. <sighs> yeah, I knew you wouldn't stay on the Express forever. Leave in peace, my friend. And, uh, take this with you. This is Mr. Amundsen's hat. Uh, but why? When he departed, he said he would leave it to his best student. Well, I suppose the time has come. Farewell, legwork. Take care of Tiernan and Rosalina. And don't forget to write to us. Where are you going, watchmaker? Don't worry, Micah. Just going on a little trip. Someone has to be at the forefront of the interstellar frontier, and I'm the only former nameless in Panagoni. So why can't it be me? Because you're all we have. Have you forgotten about Tiernan? The cosmos is way more dangerous now. What will happen to Panagoni if we lose you too? But what will happen to Panagoni if we don't find a way out? Ah, Tiernan. How could I ever forget him? I've spent countless sleepless nights asking myself why I didn't go with him back then. We nameless won't stop. Don't worry, Micah. It's just a matter of getting back to my old profession. Just wait for me to come back. But if, and it's a big if, if I don't come back in one piece, then you'll become the next watchmaker. Where are you going, old man? Oh, you're here. Answer my question. What are you up to? Relax, Gallagher. I just came up with a great idea. Wanna hear it? Oh, come on! Aren't all your ideas just ways to get yourself killed? I may be blunt here, but... You're the last remaining hero in Pentagoni. If you die too, the, the secret of Stellaron will go to the grave with you. Yes, I'm afraid there's no way out in Pentagoni, so I'll have to consider alternatives beyond Estana. 
will organize a festival using the watchmaker's legacy as a facade and send invitations to the entire cosmos to gather people here. So, a desperate struggle against the family? Desperate? <laughs> Don't we have you here, my friend? This task is challenging, but what hasn't been challenging for us along the way? Well, whatever you do, remember. Make sure to send an invitation to the Astral Express. Misha! Huh. Where are you going? Oh, it's you, Clocky. Take me to Dreamflux Reef. Last night, I had a long dream about the day we met. I want to write down that dream. Write it down? Why? Oh, so I won't forget it. Do you remember? How you got your name, Clocky? Of course! You told me that when you were a kid, you lived in a room full of clocks. Those wall clocks and pocket watches grew up with you and were your best friends. Yes, but what I didn't mention was there's a funny misunderstanding behind it. I was a kid, and there was always a special pocket watch in my memories. It was with my grandpa, guiding him on his sea voyages and leading the way in his every adventure story. I wanted to have a pocket watch like that too, and that's when you appeared in my dream. Yeah. Every night, we boarded the compass and set sail together. But you know what? It wasn't until the day my grandpa gave it to me that I realized it wasn't a pocket watch at all. It was a compass. So, your name should have been Compassy. And the Watchmaker is just a nameless. <sighs> We've arrived at Dream Flux Brief. So, where to next? You know, Clocky, I don't think... I'll be going anywhere else.
there's still time.
there's still time.
There's still time. 